Are you in a 10 team points league and you're on the internet trying to find some content to help you prepare for your fantasy basketball draft? So you on the Googles, you on the YouTubes, you on the Instagrams and the TikToks and you can't find nothing. Absolutely zilch, finito, nada. With that said, in this episode, we are going to support you with that content. We are conducting a real life, actual 10 team fantasy basketball points league draft on ESPN. We believe every NBA fan that plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. This is the 10th year of my home league. I am so excited about it. We have been in this league together for so many years. It's been a decade, yo. So I'm just super humbled and excited to share it with you. It is a 10-team league, and we never really changed the size of it because this is how we built it. Since then, I've joined 12, 14, just bigger leagues. But this is kind of a sweet spot in my heart. So I'm excited to connect with my league mates, people that I've been rocking with for 10 years, some of them are newer to the to the league. And we even have a returner, someone who was a part of our founding year, left the league, and now he's coming back here for the 10th year. So we're super excited to share it with you. People be out here trying to throw shade on 10-team points leagues. Let me tell you this. A 10-team league is the equivalent of playing 2K and picking like the all Bulls team versus the all Lakers team or the all-star team East versus the all-star team West. Everyone gets a solid team. However, what separates the players who do good and the ones who win championships are the, the people who have the ability to really navigate the waiver wire. So I'm super excited. One thing I would note, if you are Uh, in a 10-team points league and you guys haven't drafted, I always recommend that you add an extra slot or two to your roster just so the waiver wire is not super rich with all of this high-level talent. I know you don't want to just hear me ramble on about how amazing my home league is, so we're going to jump right into the value. I'm not going to hold you. Let's start this real-life draft. So we are in the draft room live and direct. Quick disclaimer with 45 seconds left. This will not be as commentary film, uh, filled as my normal drafts just because, you know, the stakes are high. Bragging rights are here. You know, this is a big deal for us in our 10th year. So please bear with me if there are any pauses or silences as I move through this. So I have my own personal rankings pulled up here and I'm just going to kind of refer to that as I move through I'll do my best to do recaps but again just understand that this is a real draft we are 10 seconds from showtime super excited big shout out to all of my league mates we got the professor my man team Grammy Joshin welcome back Kyle Trey VZ my man Mel man we are really about to do this so my man oh Man, he's not playing no games. So we got the Joker is off the board. These guys are drafting mad fast. Guys are focused and locked in. So the Joker goes first here, and then SGA goes second. Third is Luca. The boss man is fourth. He's going to take Wimby. Easy. Wimby falls to four, which is crazy. I imagine Giannis is going to be off the board. No, Ja Morant is off the board. So for me here, I like Giannis. I also like AD here. Uh, I'm leaning towards AD because that's what I wanted. However, I'm really tempted to see what Giannis does. So because he fell, I think I might have to just go ahead and grab me some Giannis Antetokounmpo. Let's grab Giannis. Excited about that. So, so far, the first round is Jokic. Shea goes at at two, which is surprising to me. Luka at three, no surprise. Victor falls to four. I think that is an absolute gift to my man, boss man, a.k.a. the Professor Bill. Ja Morant at five, I think that is way too high. I think that is way too high for Ja Morant. Giannis goes at six. I grabbed him. Then we got Tyrese Halliburton at seven. The Ja Morant pick here is going to really 
shake things up in terms of value that we can get. So I think that maybe some of the players that I was looking at when I draft next, my next draft pick is going to be the 15th pick. So I was looking at players like LaMelo Ball, James Harden. Those are the two players that I believe will fall to me at that position. However, if a player like Trey Young is still on the board, if a player like, let's say, maybe Anthony Edwards even, I'd maybe consider that. Honestly, let me take that back. I wouldn't take Anthony Edwards there. I have him lower. I have him at 20. And uh, I wouldn't take him with the 15th pick. But I would take Mitchell. I'd consider taking Donovan Mitchell. I like Donovan Mitchell in that position. But again, if LaMelo and Harden are available, both of them, I'm going to grab one of them. I just feel like even though it is a 10-team league, um, I want to secure one of those two players if I can. But it will be tempting if this value is totally thrown off by John Morant going with the fifth pick. Oh, baby. Top is off. Boobies is out. Hair blowing in the freaking wind. Convertible status. Whoa. Sabonis falls all the way to eight. That is great value for DeMontis Sabonis in a 10-team league. I am okay with that. I am okay with with that so we got DeMontis Sabonis at the 1-8 Tyrese Halliburton at the 1-7 I grabbed Giannis at the 1-6 Ja Morant at the 1-5 which is crazy man Victor Webinyama at the 1-4 Luka Doncic at the 1-3 SGA at the 1-2 and Nikola Jokic at the 1-1. Big shout-out to my man Justin, who is Brooklyn's No Heroes. He is auto-drafting, so something must be up with him. He also has a little baby, you know, a family, like I get it. But AD's still on the board, man. Now, now, if I get lucky and people fade AD, I'd be happy. I don't think that Brooklyn No Heroes auto-pick at 13 will pass on AD, especially if he didn't set his rankings to some extent. However, there's always hope that he did, you know, that he did do that. And if AD fell to me, boy, it would be Christmas out in this thing. But people I'm looking at to get value if they fall, AD, if he somehow drops, I'll take it. Don't think it will happen, but I'm open to it. Jason Tatum, if he falls to me in the second round, I would be open to that. Trey Young, Definitely the person I want the most here. And then Donovan Mitchell, I'd be open to. And then if I don't get any of those guys, I would just grab either LaMelo Ball or James Harden. Leaning towards James Harden right now, just because of the Kawhi Leonard news. If you guys haven't heard, Kawhi Leonard is out indefinitely, which is wild. AD is off the board. So we got... Anthony Davis off the board, which I totally understand. That's a great pick, and that's tons of value. And I think that might be, I think that might be my man Trey Vizi, my man Trayvon. Who is that? I think it might be Trayvon. No, that I don't know who that is. Man, that is tons of value. Who did they get in the first round? Because that's what I'm thinking. Man, that's we can't let AD fall. Like, if it would have fell to me, I'd be okay with that. But him falling to someone else questionable work. I am out on that. But back to what I was saying, uh, Jason Tatum falling to me. I'd be interested in that. Trey Young, I'm somewhat interested in LeBron James. I don't know if I have enough um, courage to pull the trigger on grabbing him here in the second round if he falls. I think I would prefer to have maybe a little more youth on my side, a little more upside. And Trey Young is the person that I'll be looking at. But again, I, I, I'm not very confident that Trey Young will fall to me. I do have confidence that Donovan Mitchell will still be on the board, who is somebody that I'm interested in. But also, I believe both James Harden and Scotty, um, both James Harden and LaMelo Ball will still be on the board. 
And then I'm looking ahead to the third round where I'm kind of eyeing Car Anthony Towns. Not sure if he will he will still be around, but definitely hoping that he is. So now these. I think it's this is a 90 second clock. We got to do better, guys. We got to do a 60. Yo, uh, Professor, uh, my man, boss man, please. Next season, 60 seconds. We can't do this. This is too much. So game timers is going right down to the wire. It looks like he is going to select Jason Tatum. So Jason Tatum is off the board. Trey Young, dot, got it. LeBron James, I'm happy with him going off the board. So I'm, I think I'm going to jump on Harden. Ayo. I think I might jump on Harden here. I think I might just do that. Looking at some of the other candidates, the Donovan Mitchells, the Jalen Brunsons. I am not touching Joel Embiid with a stick, a 10-foot stick. But, um, but I might be able to get... I might be able to get Harden on the turn. I might be able to get him on the turn, but I just don't want to risk it. I, I have so much faith in what he's going to do in the regular season. I just got to, like, go with my gut on this one. And I think that Harden with Kawhi out, the new stadium, the new arena they're opening, I just think it's so much opportunity. So I'm going to be passing on players like Joel Embiid. I'm going to pass on players like Jalen Brunson, De'Aaron Fox, Devin Booker, Pascal Siakam, Kevin Durant, Zion Williamson, Scotty Barnes, Carl Anthony Towns, LaMelo. All of these guys I'm going to pass on because I just believe in the beard. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull the trigger and, and be happy with what I'm my, – stick to my plan. Just stick to my freaking plan. The NBA Graded Sports Card Giveaway is back. Last year, we gave away two cards. We gave away a rookie Cade Cunningham and a rookie Josh Giddy, both in pristine mint condition. This year, we are back for more. But we're not just giving away two cards. We're giving away four cards. And to celebrate the new NBA season, we want you to enter. All you have to do to enter is visit our Apple Podcast page and leave us a thoughtful review. At the end of your review, I want you to drop the name of the card that you want. The cards that we're giving away this year, we have a rookie, Darius Garland, PSA 9. We have a rookie, LaMelo Ball, PSA 9. And then we also have a rookie, SGC 10, Zach Levine rookie card. And the fourth card is our mystery card. So if you're interested in that one, at the end of your review, just write the word mystery. We will announce the winners on the Sunday live stream on October 20th. Make sure you enter today. I guess I'm talking myself into it, right? So after uh, Jason Tatum goes at the 110, we have Anthony Edwards at the 2-1, Trey Young at the 2-2, LeBron James at the 2-3, and then we have Donovan Mitchell at the 2-4. I grabbed James Harden at the 2-5, which according to ESPN projections is a reach. In my personal opinion, I think it's fine. I think many have him in the top 20. Me grabbing him with the 15th pick I think is absolutely fair. However, it looks like LaMelo Ball might still be available. There's a slim chance, slim opportunity. We don't have any auto drafters before me in my next pick, so there's a chance that people will jump around and be fearful of the potential ankle injuries and stuff like that. So that's something I'm taking into consideration. I also have some interest in Steph Curry. I think Steph Curry has some, some gas left in the tank. And if I could grab Steph Curry in the third round of a 10-team league, I just can't say no to that. So that's something I'm also looking at as we approach the third round. It's also worth noting that with the 2-6 pick Zion goes, 2-7 Jalen Brown goes, and with the second round, eighth pick, Carl Anthony Towns is off the board. Man, that's wild. And get this, your man was like in the 40s, I think. Like his ranking was way down, and now he's going in 
the second round in a 10-team league. So that's saying that your man is top 20. ESPN has him lower. They have him at like, I want to say they had him at 23, a little outside of the top 20, but he is going in the top 20 in some drafts here. And that's my man, Team Shonuff. He is a former champion. He won the championship uh, a number of years ago. Newly married, uh, baby on the way. Congratulations, my main man, Marlon. So he grabs Car Anthony Towns. I think he's also a Knicks fan. So he might be, there might be a bit of Homerism involved with that. Okay, so back to the recap. After Car Anthony Towns, we got Devin Booker at the 2 9, De'Aaron Fox at the 2 10, Kevin Durant at the top of the third. I think that's tons of value. And Joel Embiid continues to fall. When do you grab Joel Embiid is the question. When do you grab Joel Embiid? Because at some point, someone's going to have to just take him. And I think it's going to be one of these auto-draft players. But if he falls to 27, 28, if he falls to the 28th pick, that is crazy. So people are really concerned about Joel Embiid. It could be a huge risk to take him, but it could also be a wildly, wildly profitable investment if the reward is present in terms of his health and all of that. So, I, I, listen, I, I ain't drafting Joel Embiid. My, if, if LaMelo's available, I'm taking LaMelo. If Chet Holmgren is available, I'm taking Chet Holmgren. Also open to taking Steph Curry here. I might even wait on Chet and just take Steph. But, like, I am not going to take Joel just because I don't want the headache. I don't want to have to, you know, I don't want to have to be following the news every day. Is he playing? Is he not playing? He's not playing back-to-backs. One thing I would note, if you play in a sleeper lock-in mode format, you might want to consider drafting Joel Embiid, especially if, especially if you can get him in the late part of the first round in a 10 or 12 or even 14 team league because he only needs to play one game per week. So you pick the game, you can pick it after he plays, you can see it. So I think for sleeper, it might work out. It might be profitable work. I am up, so let me lock in. LaMelo is off the board. So Steph Curry is here. I'm looking at Steph. I'm looking at Shingoon. I'm looking at Shingoon. LaMelo's off the board. So is Joel. I'm looking at Shingoon. I'm looking at Curry. I'm looking at Chet. I have to take Shingoon here. I got Shingoon at 23. I would be grabbing him at 26. I think that is great value. I'm going to take Shingoon. No hesitation. Let's get it. I'm all good on that. I call him the baby joker. I am all in on Shingun. Definitely a player that I'm high on. Higher than most on Shingun. I just think that, you know, one thing about this fantasy basketball game, guys, and you want to really be mindful of that, when you have a decision between an experienced, proven veteran that may be declining, for example, Steph Curry, Damian Lillard, players of this caliber, DeMar DeRozan, people who are all in this area, Pascal Siakam. You want to look at the younger players who have the upside, the Tyrese Maxis, the Cade Cunninghams, the Desmond bring the pain, Bane. I came to bring the Bane, hardcore to your brain, chicka chicka. Like Jalen Williams, these kind of players because there's no telling how far their leap can be. So for me, yes, I have some stability in my opinion with a James Harden, with a Giannis Antetokounmpo, but me grabbing Alperin Shingun, who I believe is in his third year, there's still tons of opportunity for growth. So I'm up. I'll do a recap after, but Chet Holmgren is still on the board. I pray and hope that my man Teal, aka the Fearless Light Knight, does not take him. And guess who he takes? Him. What a heartbreaker. That is a heartbreaker. That is a heartbreaker. So we're in the fourth round. I'm looking at Evan Mobley here, if he's around. Um, looking at, yeah, Evan Mobley. That that would be my, that would be my next pick. 
dag, that breaks my heart. I'm mad at you on that, Teal. I was so very close. So close. So close. So close. Mm. Paolo's gone. Bane, not really. I'm not really wanting to take Bane. I could take Bane there, but I don't want to. I I think it it has to be PG thirteen. PG thirteen. Maybe it's PG thirteen. They got him listed as out. I'm fine with that. Not trying to take Jalen Johnson there. Considering it, it's got to be Jalen Johnson or. Evan Mobley or Paul George for me here. The, that's the area. I'm not interested in marking in Murray, DeRozan, you know, Brown, Jalen Williams, any of these guys in that area. I'm looking at Paul George, Jalen Johnson, or Evan Mobley. And I feel like I'm not really hunting positions at that point, at this point. I do believe that Evan Mobley is kind of what I want for my squad. I do have interest in Paul George, but yeah, I I got Mobley marked down here as the guy that I really want to leave the draft with. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to pull the trigger. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to do. I'm committed. I'm a committed man. I'm a committed man. All right. So left a little bit on the table there, which is okay. I just... As much as I like PG-13 this year, Philly just a lot of question marks for me. And I've drafted Jalen Johnson in a bunch of other places, so I think a part of it is I've missed out on Mobley in a couple couple different drafts, and I just like having him on my team, so I'm going to commit to that. Looking back, (coughs) if we can take a quick look back, after Carr Anthony Towns, We had Devin Booker with the 19th pick, De'Aaron Fox with the 20th. At the top of the third, we have KD, Paolo Banquero, Scotty Barnes, LaMelo Ball, who I wanted, lost him. Joel Embiid wanted no parts of that. Alperin Shingun, yes. Damian Lillard, Pascal Siakam, Tyrese Maxey, Nikola Vucevic. I am out on Vucevic. I'm so glad that he's off the board. So glad. So glad. Steph Curry, yes. Kyrie Irving, Cade Cunningham, whoo, Chet Holmgren. Man, Teal, you are cleaning up. Aisle three clean up. The fearless knight has a bucket and a mop. And I'm not talking M-O-P. Any up, cold as ice. I salvaged the scraps and got Evan Mobley with the 35. Jalen Brown goes 36. DeJounte Murray, 37. And then we got Desmond. Bring the pain, Bane. I came to bring the Bane hardcore to your brain. Chicka, chicka. Listen. Okay, so gearing up for my next pick here. On my rankings, I'm looking at, in the fifth round, I'm looking at people like Julius Randle, if he's still around. Franz Wagner is another target that I had. And that's kind of it. Really, those are the two players that I'm really looking at. If anyone falls here, for example, if Jalen Br- Jalen Brown's gone, if uh, yeah, I think that's kind of it. I don't think any of these other players I have much interest in. Maybe Julius Randle. If Julius Randle is in this area, if Franz Wagner is in this area, actually Paul George. I'd be open to take Paul George if he fell. So if Paul George falls here, I gotta take him. Like I'm not gonna. And if Jalen Johnson falls here, I'll take I'll take either of those guys. I'll take so I had them down both as potential picks for my fourth round pick in a 10 team league. I also had Evan Mobley, and I just decided on Evan Mobley. Um, but yeah, uh, Laurie Marketing goes with the four nine. Not interested in him. I think they might move him. Like I don't want nothing to do with him. Demar Demar not like us. DeRozan goes at the four ten. I think that's a good pick. And look, we excited. Jalen Johnson and both Paul George are still on the board. I'm getting one of those guys. If 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 I know anything, the next guy is going to pick Jamal Murray or Julius Randle. He's going to pick Jamal Murray or Julius Randle. That's my man Marlon, a.k.a. Team Show Enough. He's going to pick Jamal Murray or Julius Randle right here. And if he does that, I secure at least 
a Paul George or Jalen Johnson. Now, I talked about picking upside over experience. Here with Paul George, I don't know, man. I might have to just grab Paul George. Let me see what his injuries are because they saying he's out. So let's see. We say the 76ers announced Tuesday that George's MRI showed a bone bruise and no structural damage. Kyle will be re- uh George will be reevaluated in approximately one week. This is good news for George after an awkward injury during Monday's preseason game. He shouldn't miss too much time beyond that. Okay. So open to it. I might take the upside just because I'm not trying to start the season off with a, with a guy who is habitually injured. So I might just grab Jalen Johnson here. Team show enough is going to take Jamal Murray or Julius Randle. Oh, he grabbed Jalen Williams. Look at you going outside the box. Boss man is up. Boss man is likely going to grab Emmanuel quickly or Jalen Johnson. He's going to grab Jalen Johnson or Emmanuel quickly. He's a shark. He grabs Jalen Johnson. So now this makes my choice a little easier. Um, looking now at Paul George. I might just eat. The extra week that he has and just be like, hey, PG-13 is going to be out for a week. I just got to eat it. Then we got Fred Van Vliet, who is somebody I'm also well interested in. Let me take a look here. Yeah, I'm, I'm well interested in Fred Van Vliet. Franz Wagner here. So, man, that's one thing about a 10 team, man. It's like being a kid at a freaking candy store. Man. Sweet tooth work. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So I'm up. Man, the the world is my oyster, man. I got Paul George here, Fred Van Vliet, Franz Wagner. I might be able to get Franz or Freddie on the turn. I will not be able to get PG-13. I'm going to throw him on my IR for a couple of weeks, and I'm okay with that. I wanted... I wanted... Jalen Johnson, Randall's still here, Ooh, so it's got to be Randall, Ooh, it's got to be Randall or George, Ooh, Randall might go off, but you know what, I don't got no wings yet, and I don't really play the positional game when it comes to fantasy, I just kind of let it play out and get, grab the best available or the people that I'm most interested in, I should say, according to my rankings. So I think that Paul George here, I got to take Paul George just because. Like, I'm, listen, I can eat a week as long as he's not resting back-to-backs. And he won't be. If he's healthy, he going to play. And I think being alongside players like Maxi and Embiid are going to just make him better. He will take a hit in terms of his scoring and maybe even his usage. It won't impact his minutes. It won't impact his assists. It might actually improve his assists, and it won't impact his defensive stats or his rebounds. I'm drafting PG-13, a.k.a. Podcast P. It's your boy. It's a celebration, snitches. So let's get back to the recap. Give you guys a little rundown of where we are right now. Uh-rah, uh-rah, uh-rah. After Desmond bring the pain, Bane, I came to bring the Bane. We have Lauren, Lori Marketing at uh, Lori Marketing at 39. DeMar Not Like Us, DeRozan at 40. At the top of the fifth, we have Bam Adebayo. That's tons of value. Man, he fell. We have... Rudy Gobert at 42, Jalen Williams at 43, Jalen Johnson at 44. I hate you, Professor. I hate you with love. Number 45, Jalen Green. Number 46, I drafted the big O because he has a red O by his name. Paul George, not Oscar Robinson. Oscar Robinson does not play fantasy. So... We are here approaching my next pick in the sixth round, and it's coming fast, y'all. I'm looking at the following players. We have Fred Van Vliet, Franz Wagner, also interested in Darius Garland in this area. For me, I also have some interest in Emmanuel Quickly, but I I would like to get him later. I, I have him a little lower 
in my rankings, I think I have Emmanuel quickly. Yeah, I just have him lower than that. I, I have him at 64. I don't think I would want to take him with pick 55. Wouldn't be mad at it if you did. But according to these projections, it looks like they want him to go at 55. So I'm looking at Fred Van Vliet and Franz Wagner. I think I might want to double down on another wing. So I have Paul George. And it's a bit of scarcity, I think, in points leagues for like decent uh, wings. I think there's a surplus of power forwards and centers and guards. I think those small forwards are really the position that if you want to make sure you secure some of those based on scarcity, those would be the guys. And I'm looking at Franz Wagner here. I like Fred Van Vliet. Let me just check my rankings to see where I currently have them. I have Freddie at 50 and I have Franz at 51. I highlighted here on my rankings that I wanted to take Franz. I don't have Freddie highlighted. And I typically do that for my personal rankings. And I recommend to you guys, if you're still drafting out there, if you're doing a late draft or if you – let me get focused. Shoot. God damn. Oh, he did it again. He sniped me again, that fricker. Man, Teal, I'm going to get at you, boy. You, man, I'm, I'm going to really – crush you this season i am i'm after you he sniped franz wagner you believe that that's when you do content you create content and your league mates listen to your stuff it's like they're in your freaking head hot dog water with the brat worst residue Sour kraut juice. I'm so mad at you, Teal. You you have no idea, bro. I am so coming for you. A yo, I am on your ass. Pause. I'm gonna have to take Fred Van Vliet here. I'm just gonna have to do it. Man, that makes me mad. You good? You. Mm-hmm. I'm after you, bro. You, you, you on my hit list. You are on my H I T list. I am out on Teal. I am out on the fearless night. I don't give a shit, Sue Puppy. We will never make another deal. Unless it's a really good one. I'm just joking. That's my man. I love you, man. All right, let's go, Fred Van Vliet. Let's just do it. Whatever. I, I whatever. Whatever, what the frick ever. Man, you got me for Franz. I'm going to do the recap in a second. Jeez Louise. Okay, so quickly recap. After I drafted Paul George, we have, is that where we were? Yeah, I think so. At the 46th pick uh, in the fifth round there, I have Paul George, Julius Randle goes next, Jamal Murray, Miles Bridges, Kobe White, top of the sixth, Jimmy, $100 cup of coffee, butler the butler at 51. Sixth round, pick 52, Cam Thomas, yes. D'Angelo Russell, yes. Franz Wagner at 54, big shout out to the fearless Knight, a.k.a. the Snipe Master. Fred Van Vliet. At the 55, a.k.a. Leftovers. 56, Brandon Miller. I see a jump for that young man. Yes. 57, Jaron Jackson Jr. How the mighty have fallen. How the mighty have fallen. I'm not live right now. Am I live? Let me check. Because I'm like, how the heck this guy really be out here sniping me? I don't believe they got me drafting right before, right after this guy. Jeez Louise. This is just some horse manure. Okay, so Jaron Jackson Jr. goes at the 6-7. Team show enough is up. He's going to take Mikael Bridges. I promise you. He's going to take Mikael Bridges or Zach Levine. Mikael Bridges in this area, this seems high for me. Yeah, he took Mikael Bridges. Look at that. Mikael Bridges goes at the 6-8. I think that's inaccurate. I don't think that Mikael Bridges should go that high. It's just too much happening in New York for me to be taking Mikael Bridges that high. So I am out on that decision. Just for reference for the people at home listening, Mikhail Bridges, I think I got him. Where did I got Mikhail at? Let me check, take a look. Got Miles here. Mikhail, la, 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 la. Where the hell is Mikhail? 
And I'm 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 fired up tonight, guys. Y'all gotta excuse me. When I do my little personal drafts, I be on I be on one. I be out here really, really cooking. Yeah, I don't know why I have Mikhail. I have to take time to look that up. Or oh, I got him at 67. So I got him at 67, and he goes way earlier. He goes, I think, 58. He goes at 58. So yeah, I'm 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 not taking him that earlier. But you know who that early. But you know who I will take. I'll take Jalen Duran with my next pick. I'll take Jalen Duran if he's around. Shish kebabs messing around with me. Let me see. Is Oh, yeah, the fearless night is after me. Thank God. Because he'll take whoever I'm interested in at this point. Jeez Louise. So just to run it down, uh, I am in the sixth round, approaching the seventh. My seventh round preferred pick is Jalen Duran. People that I am interested in that are still on the board, Darius Garland, I was interested in the sixth round. Um, and that is it. That is it. Those are the players I was interested in in the sixth round. So if Darius Garland is still around, I would consider taking him here. But Jalen Duran is kind of the guy I want in this area. I do believe that he could fall to me. I just don't want to mess around with Teal. On the next round, on, like on in round eight, I feel like at round eight, I'm rolling my dice if I like leave Duran on the board, and I really want to have him on my team this year. I think that he has so much potential to just be a double double machine, night in and night out. Think prime Andre Drummond. He can average like ten and fifteen. You know, uh, I think last year he averaged thirteen and ten. I am, I imagine that that will increase especially the rebounds. He is a beast on the boards. And I just, for a points league, he's just he, he checks all of the boxes. Darius Garland, on the other hand, I feel like is just a valuable asset, somebody that people are maybe a little lower on and should get a little more respect but doesn't. So I think grabbing him here is also tons of value. I'm not mad at Kyle Kuzma, but I wouldn't personally draft him for my team. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. is a fine pick. Again, wouldn't draft him for my team. But Darius Garland, I'm looking at here. And I think I might just roll my dice and see if Duran falls to me. Let me ask myself this question. Hey, Robin, if you had to pick one player to have on your team, just one, would it be Darius Garland or would it be Jalen Duran? And then you would say, mm, I think it might be Darius Garland just because he can dribble and he can pass, where Duran can rebound and rebound. Score a couple of points, but he ain't, got, he ain't dishing, no rocks out, dishing out the rock. And honestly, he doesn't have the best uh, defensive profile as well. I do like the Giddler, though. The Giddler, I think I would be, I would be interested in him in the eighth round. So if I don't get Duran, if I don't, Miss out on if I miss out on Duran for the next round, I will be okay because I had Garland as a preferred pick in the sixth round, and that's why you do this exercise, guys. Create your own spreadsheet, highlight the players you want, so that way when these questions come up, you know these are the two or three options that I'd be open to, and that's it. So I'm not gonna stray from the plan. Yeah, I want Duran, and yeah, Teal. The sniper might catch me for Durin, but I got to take Garland. Just got to take Garland. Let's get back to the recap. After Jaron Jackson Jr. with the 57th pick, we have Mikhail Bridges at the 58th. Derek White at the 59, Emmanuel pick uh, Emmanuel quickly at the 60. That is a fine pick. Big shout out to you, Joshin, aka Kobe Juan Kenobi. Round seven, we got Zach Levine at the top of the seventh. Jared Allen, yes. Miles Bridges at the 63, maybe. Kyle's, Kyle Kuzma, I'm not mad at you taking that pick, Bill. I wouldn't mess with it. 65, Anthony Simons. And then I grabbed Darius Garland at the 66 in the middle of the seventh round. And my, and my next pick is coming up fast. 
and it looks like Duran might still be on the board. Okay, Teal is going to take him. Teal, don't take him. Did he go already? Somebody already got him. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. He's long gone. He's long gone. So now I'm looking at Josh Giddy and Tobias Harris. I want the Giddler. I want the Giddler. Let me have the Giddler. Please, Teal, be nice. Play nice. Take Gafford or Bradley Beal or Nurkic or Tobias Harris or Zach Eady. Don't take the Giddler. Leave me the Giddler. Josh, the Giddler, Giddy. I got to have the Giddler. Come on, man. Come on, Teal. I know. Wait a minute. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on now. Let's do the recap. After Darius Garland, we had Nick Claxton, Michael Porter Jr., da- Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran goes to who the hell took Jalen Duran from me? Let me make sure I know. I'm going to put a target on they back, too. Who is GOAT? Is that you, Trayvon? Trayvon, I'm on, yo. Mm, I'm not even going to say it. I already said it once, and I'm not going to be saying it again. But you already know. And you from Harlem. And you know I don't mess with people from Harlem like that. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I want no problem with I want no problem with Harlem. I'm from Brooklyn. I don't want no problem with Harlem. Y'all dress too nice. Yes, he takes Drew Holiday. Thank goodness God he didn't take the Giddler. I'm taking the Giddler. Oh baby, this 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 is historic. This is historic. Okay, so after. After Jalen Duran at the 7-9, we have Chris Porzingis at the 7-10. Brandon Ingram at the 8-1, the forgotten man. Colin Sexton at the 8-2. C.J. McCollum at the 8-3. I am all the way out on C.J. McCollum. I don't give a shit, Sue, puppy. I am not drafting that man. Oh, mama, I am not drafting that man. I'm not. Uh, at the 8-4, my man Teal grabs, a.k.a. the Fearless Knight, a.k.a. the Sniper Rifle, grabs Drew Holiday at the 8-4. Good for you, bro. You you deserve that. You deserve that. I grab Josh the Giddla, Giddy, at the 8-5. People been loving the Giddler. I'm, I'm just going to have to say that. So that's a part of it, too, that I just love saying the Giddler. And I'm not going to refer to anything else about that. Just going to say that Josh, the Giddler, Giddy, my main man. All right. So looking ahead to round nine, some of the targets that I'm interested in there are pretty much Zach Eady at that point. That's just it. That's the only guy I want. That is the only guy I need a Yo, wah. yeah, I'm I'm, gra- I'm drafting Zach Eady, and I think we have a center's limit here, and I only have one, so I only have one center, so I'm gonna grab Zach Eady here. Man, I'm excited about Zach Eady. He, your boy, looking real, real tough, and that's gonna be the first rookie off the board. I don't give a shit, su puppy, my guy. I am drafting Zach Eady. If he's, if he's on the board next. Now, if he's not on the board, players that I'm looking at are Tobias Harris, also open to a Min Thompson. But I have a Min later, I, actually. I have him. Yeah, I have a Min. I have a Min at 118. So I don't think I would even want him that early. I'm not taking a Min Thompson that early. But I would take Tobias Harris. I would be open to Kaminga if Kaminga's still around. Let me see. And then we got Kawhi Leonard falling. I want nothing to do with that. So Kaminga's still around here. I'd be open to that. I'll be open to Harris. I'll be open to, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So it's it's Kaminga, Harris. My top preferred pick for the next round is Zach Eady. Back to the recap. After Josh the Giddler Giddy at the 8-5, we have Jabari Smith Jr. at the 8-6. Love that pick. Love the upside play. Not sure if I believe in it. Tyler Hero at the 8-7. As you know, if you've ever listened to my voice on this channel, that I have been very, very, very hard on Tyler Hero. A-yo. I've been very, very down on him. A-yo. But... What I would say in this season of my life, that 
I need a hero. I need a hero to heal me through the end of the night. Oh, he's gotta be real and he's gotta be strong and he's gotta belong to the night. I need a hero. Dun, dun. I'm all in on Tyler Hero. I was a maybe. I was like a maybe on Tyler Hero. Man, listen, uh, that's it. It's official. Text your friends. Let them know Robin Marks from Believe in Fantasy Basketball is about that Tyler Hero life. Supportive work. I'm just saying. I am just saying. So Tyler Hero goes at the A7. I'm telling you, man, these real drafts are just a different type of show. I got another one happening on Monday, I think. It's our last one. I might record that one, too, because it, it takes a little more energy. It's, it's a different type of feel. You know, when I'm doing a mock draft or something like that, it's a little more loosey-goosey in terms of, like, who I'm picking, how much um, thought process and preparation I'm putting into who I pick. But my, like... My leagues, especially my home leagues, like these are my friends, like these are my guys, you know. Uh, so this means a lot to me to be sharing that with you, with you uh, tonight or today, whenever you're listening or watching. And I, I didn't address the fact that I'm off camera for the actual draft, and that's just because ain't nobody got time for that. Like right now, like I'm locked in. I got too much happening on my screen to be trying to like you know, look fresh and fly with the lights in the back and all of that with the with the fitted, the NBA fitted caps and like, nah, man. Like, this hits different. This is like 10 years. We are celebrating our 10-year anniversary this season. Are you freaking crazy? I'm not coming on no camera right now. Come on, man. This is this is serious, man. This is like this is re- and we got a expanded roster. Jeez, Louise, this is serious. How many rounds we got? I think we go like sixteen rounds, 16, 17 rounds. Come on, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen rounds. Jeez, Louise, it's like a weapon. Tobias Harris off the board, Frank. Man, that makes me mad. Okay. So Zach Eady's still there. That is my preferred target. So I'm still okay. And OG and an OB. No, Kaminga. Kaminga was the other person that I was interested in. And Kaminga's still around. So that's okay. Again, guys, excuse the pauses and um, breaks. I'm just chilling here. Trying to be patient to with these long tail round, um, you know, limits like this minute and thirty business is no good. Guys, set a sixty second clock for your for your decisions or thirty seconds for your to, for people to pick their make their pick. This is this is crazy. This is crazy town. After Tyler Hero at the eight seven, we have Bradley Beal at the eight eight, Dan Gafford at the eight nine. Austin Reeves at the 810. Tobias Harris at the top of the ninth at the nine at the nine one. At the nine one. Is that right? Yeah, he's at the nine one. Excuse me. So Team Grammy is up. He grabs a Min Thompson. That's way too early for me, like I said earlier. Way too early for me. Oh, man. Oh, man. The, the, the boss man is before me. He might snipe me for Zach Eady, so I got to start preparing my backup plan. So my backup plan was Kaminga, right? OG and Anobi and Kaminga. OG might be around early. I think OG might be around early for me. Kaminga, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Where do I have R.J. Barrett? I got R.J. Barrett higher. Okay, he's available. Great. Great. I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. So I'm going to just quickly grab Zach Eady here. Okay. So after Amin Thompson at the 9-2, we have Terry Rozier at the 9-3, Yusuf Nurkic at the 9-4, Jonas Valachunas at the 9-5, and then I grab Zach Eady at the 9-6. Yes, he is a rookie, but rookie sinners have a lot more upside than rookie guards, in my opinion. 
and I'll tell you why. I think with rookie guards, there's the entire turnovers conversation that you have to have with them around, you know, their fantasy games. And for ESPN, you lose negative two points. You lose two points, I should say, for turnovers. So that's something to take into consideration. Oh, we have a Kawhi Leonard sighting. My man, Teal, a.k.a. the Fearless Knight, a.k.a. the Sniper, a.k.a. Sniper Rifle. He grabs Kawhi Busted Thigh Leonard with the 9-7. I will say this, that that is a shot in the dark. There's no telling what's going to happen. He might retire. He might not come back to the end of the season. They're going to ramp him up slow. I am not wasting my pick on that. But I know Teal... And he is playing the long game. And in a 10-team league, he knows that he'll be able to find some talent on the wave of wire. My next pick is coming up fast, so let me lock in really quick. Kaminga is still around. OG and Anobi would be my preference, but I like Kaminga here as well. Let me see if OG is around. And I'm going to see if I can... OG is here. OG is here. So OG and Anobi, definitely the player I have listed that I want on my team. However, many of the players that I had in the earlier rounds ranked higher are still available, including one, Jonathan Kaminga. If I had to pick between Kaminga and OG, I'm a little more, I have a little more faith in what OG will do. Over Kaminga. Wait a minute. Did Kaminga? Kaminga's off the board. What the heck are you talking about, Robin? Man, yo, Teal better not snipe OG from me. That's one thing. He's going to draft Trace Jackson Davis here or something. He ain't going to draft Kaminga. I'm lower on Trace Jackson Davis. I think I'm targeting him in the in the way later rounds. Yeah. Uh, where do I have him? I'm open to Trace Jackson Davis, but right now I'm looking at OG. Make sure I didn't... Yeah, I think I have Trace Jackson Davis somewhere in the hundreds. I don't think I have him as high as he's moved up in the ESPN rankings here. Yeah, I have him way down. And maybe that should be adjusted, especially with ESPN rankings looking the way they look, if you want to have him on your team. And I do want Trace Jackson Davis on my team. Oh, DeAndre Ayton, that's a fine pick. That is a fine pick. I am not mad at that one freaking bit i am not mad at that at all but i'm grabbing og heck i'm not like what bye 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 shoot listen people like i know that many people have concerns around the amount of the amount of mouths to feed in new york with brunson with bridges heart now Carl Anthony Towns, and people don't believe that there's going to be uh, a runway for OG and Anobi to provide the type of value that they may be expected from him in the past. Guys, I just drafted him in a 10-team league in the 10th round. Let that sink in. 1-0, the 10th round. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. It don't get better than that. I, 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 I am very happy with that pick. Let's quickly go back to the recap. After Zach Eady at the 86th pick in, in, in the ninth round, Kawhi Leonard goes off the board, Josh Hart, R.J. Barrett, Devin Vassell. Top of the 10th, Mark Williams. Heck to the nah Keegan Murray. Jonathan Kaminga, yes. DeAndre Ayton, yes. O.J. Ananobi, yes. Malcolm Brogdon, heck to the nah Yaka Pertl, maybe. Jaime Hakez Jr., maybe. 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 I could be wrong, though. Um, I did not win the championship last year. I think I was in the finals. I think the, the professor, the boss man, won last year. I have won six of the ten years that we've been around, so I feel confident as one of the elder statesmen's original founding members of the league, but also a um, all-time champion. <laughs> but... I think the professor's, he's on my heels. He's coming. 
He's he's definitely 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 coming after the the, the crown. So he was a champion last year. I'll be looking to uh, dethrone him. And Teal is one of the best fantasy basketball players I know for points leagues, and he always comes up a little short. Uh, against me and against Bill, the the professor, aka boss man, and we played in a WNBA league. We we started a WNBA league this summer, and he got the championship for that. So I was kind of like, ah, right, you take that, <laughs> you till you got that one. You you got that one. That's okay. You got that one. You ain't gonna get this one. You ain't gonna get this one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. So quickly on the recap before my next pick. We had, after Jaime Jaquez Jr., Aaron Gordon, Grayson Allen, and then at the top of the 11th round, Trace Jackson Davis. That is too high for me. Too high, too high. For the 11th round, players that I'm looking at, I was looking at Denny Avdia, Jordan Pool. Jordan, leave the kids at the pool pool with the baddies. Guys, I was looking at. Tyus Jones, I have some interest. I have him... Ranked at 85. I really like Denny Abdia this year. I'm just curious to see what happens. I would be interested in Reed Shepard. But because I already drafted Zach Eady, I'd rather have someone like Denny Abdia, who I've seen provide value, and also the fact that he's in this new environment in Portland with dual position eligibility at the small forward and power forward is just really tempting. And again, this is according to my plan. This is somebody I wanted in the 11th round in a 10-team league. So these are the two guys I have. I have I have Denny Avdia and I have Jordan Poole in this area. So let's see if both are available. So Denny Avdia is available. Let's see if Poole is available. Poole is available as well. So we got both of the players I'm interested in. I have Poole at 103. I have I have Poole at 103. I have Denny Avdia at 104. I am picking 106. Are there any other players around that I have higher? Not really. Not really. Reed Shepard, I have, I think I got Reed lower than that. So I'm leaning towards, of the two, yeah, I have Reed Shepard way down. Like, I got, maybe I need to adjust these based on what these projections are, but like, I, I just kind of believe in what I built. And I'm adjust, I adjusted these like a week ago. So I'm, I'm confident. I don't want to be like making adjustments based on, ESPN's questionable projections here. So I have to choose between Denny Avdia and Jordan leave the kids at the pool pool with the baddies. I just feel like Jordan Poole's name is a little more exciting for me, but I, I, I feel like Denny, Denny can really do some damage. And also, I'm securing another one of those small forward, power forward players. Um, Poole is going to be starting, though. I might just take Poole. Let me take Poole. Denny Avdia, I like him, right? I, I really like him. Man, but I could probably get Poole on a turn. Let me just grab Denny. I'm going to stick to my plan. I get grab Denny. I might be able to get Poole on a turn. He might be around. And if he's around for that 115 pick, because they have him ranked at 130, I might be able to, to get him. So, you know, you want to have your plan, right? But me having him at one, 103, where the, the actual site has him at a, a buck 30, you want to take that into consideration. Because if your league mates are not like a sweat and a freaking sicko like you, like, doing spreadsheets for your freaking fantasy basketball team with tabs for each league size, like the 10, the 12, and the 14, and the 8, and then whatever, the 16-team league rankings broken down by rounds with preferences, like some sicko sweat crap that you do, then you can exploit that. You can be like, hey... Let me take Denny Avdia, who I have at 104, and save Jordan Poole, who I have at 103, 
and see if he falls to me because ESPN has him here at 130. And that's the game. And that's how you get value. And honestly, I think we've harvested a bunch of value here. Like, this is crazy. This is looking like, what? We are cooking with hot bacon grease. Standing on business. Let's get back to the recap. Man, this draft is going long. This one, these minute and 30 picks got to stop. Okay. So, back to the recap. After Trace Jackson Davis at the 10, at the 11 1, we have Russell Westbrook at the 11 2, Nas, Reed's at, Nas Reed at the 11 3, Jeremy Grant at the 11 4. Heck to the no. Bogdan Bogdanovich at the 11 5. Denny Avdia at the 11 6. Buddy Heel at the 11 7. Steven Castle at the 11 8. At the 11 8. As noted earlier, if you are doing a 10-team league, make sure you add a couple extra roster slots to make sure that your waiver wire is not looking like the NBA All-Third team. You don't want to have all of these like really good players in your waiver wire. It just makes the game less interesting, in my opinion. If that's what you like, and you like to have the waiver wire rich with NBA Third Team players, then that's all good. But I would strongly recommend making sure that you add an extra roster spot or two when you are a part of a 10-team fantasy basketball league, no matter the format, right? Even if you're in a sleeper league, sleeper lock-in mode or game pick mode, or if you're in a category or roto, just add a couple extra roster spots if you are in a 10-team league. So we are losing steam here. I'm about to fall a freaking sleep. I hope you're okay and you're still rocking with me. Jeez Louise. I'm about to crash out, yo. I'm about to just get hyped for no reason, even though these players are not exciting to me. I am going to find a way to be happy and excited. And I'm joking. This is great. I'm just, like, really, in these later rounds, it's just not as exciting so, look, Tyus Jones is still around. I got That's tons of value there. Um, looking ahead to my next pick. For the 12th round, I was interested in Amin Thompson, who's gone, Trey Murphy the third, But also, I have Tyus Jones at 85. Like, if Tyus Jones falls, I might just take him on the strength. Um, also, quite interested in Asar Thompson, Brandon Pajimski. How high am I on Brandon Pajimski? Because that's, Teal might sni snipe him, but... Brandon Pajemski, I, I really like him. I think that he could be really dope this year. God forbid something happens to Steph Curry, it's going to be on like popcorn for that young man. But let me see where I have him. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm, I might be a little lower than, than I thought. This is the, I, I'm scrolling down here and I do not see his name. It is like, did I forget to put him on the list? Like, where did I leave him? Where did I leave AirPods? Where'd you leave your AirPods, Robin? What the heck? Okay, let me see. I am in 80, 90s, B for Brandon. What about Ben Simmons? I might listen. I've been talking crap about Ben Simmons, but like, shoot. I might have to. Oh, man, I just got a cramp. Jesus Christ, I just got a cramp. Sorry, y'all. I played basketball today. I don't know what the heck my 40-something-year-old self was thinking. But, yeah, I don't know where the hell I have uh, Brandon Pajemski. Oh, he he grabbed pool? Man, I'm uh, man, I'm not messing with you, man. I, I have forgot about him. You can have him. You can have him, Teal. Freaking. Man, the sniper rifle don't be playing, man. Let me get focused. So here in the 12th round, I was eyeing Amin Thompson, who was gone. Definitely interested in Trey Murphy the third. Brandon Pajemski is looking quite interesting here, but I really like Tyus Jones. I, I feel like Tyus Jones might be the move for me. That is value on value of what I wanted. I got him here listed at 85. I don't know. Am I bugging? Am I tripping? But 
Isaiah Hartenstein hurt his hand. I don't really want to draft him. Brandon Pajimski, I, I don't know where I even have him. I'm looking for his daggone name, and it's like, he ain't here. Where the heck is Brandon Pajemski? I know I had I know I ranked him. I was interested in drafting him at some point. Like what? You listen, Excel sheets, man, sometimes you just gotta search. You gotta just press the search bar because this joint is like giving me a whole headache. I'm like, I'm out on this spreadsheet. Now I'm gonna draft Tyus Jones. Because I, I again, I gotta stick to the numbers. Like, yes, I'm interested in Trey Murphy the third. Yes, I was interested in Jordan Poole, but Tyus Jones I have way higher. And even though I, he's not a preferred pick of mine, I like the idea of grabbing him in this spot. So I'm going to take him. Now, for Hartenstein, if people pass on Hartenstein, I think in the 12th round, I'm justified by grabbing him because I had Hartenstein... Where did I have him before the injury? Because I did not update my rankings after the news of his broken wrist. And I think I had him at 70. So for me, I'm going to queue up Hartenstein because, um, yeah, I want him. Donovan Klingon, I don't know if you saw Donovan Klingon. Donovan Klingon had a 20-point, a 20-rebound game or something like that. I'm interested in both of those guys for this next pick. <coughs> for the... 13th round, the players that I have listed here that I was interested in, Scoot Henderson, Reed Shepard. It looks like Reed is gone. Let me see if Scoot is still around. Because if Scoot is still around, he would be in that same mix. Yep, he's still around. Of Klingon Hartenstein. Uh, in this area, also very interested in Alex Saar. And in the later rounds, I try to really shoot for some of those younger Upside plays to see if I could, you know, make something happen off of the potential of a player. Uh, Rob Dillingham is a player that I've spoken about a lot this offseason. And uh, I was recently on Josh Lloyd's Locked On Fantasy Basketball podcast, and we debated about it. And he has some really good points on why Rob is not going to play especially with the arrival of Dante DiVincenzo. He, he believed that before Dante arrived, there was going to be a path for him to get some minutes. What I'm banking on is talent. And what happens is talent rises to the top. So even if Dante's there, even if Mike Conley's there, if this young man gets some burn, he might not be the sixth man off the bench like he was in Kentucky where he crushed it. But if he's seventh? That could be a big deal. So for me, I, I'm just really curious to see what Rob Dillingham can do if he gets the minutes. But again, if you decide to draft him, like I will likely draft him here with my last pick if he's still around, you got to be patient. You can't, um, yeah, you can't really draft him and expect that the first week of the season, he's going to be clicking. You got to just let him sit at the back of your bench and just sit tight and be patient. Some of these other rookies like Zach Eady, Donovan Klingon, you might get that immediate push um, and value early, especially with Zach Eady. So that's something you want to be mindful of. Don't, don't expect that. If you draft Rob Dillingham, expect to keep him on your roster for two months before you make a decision. Don't drop him early if you draft him you know you want to make sure like you give him some time or you could just drop him and if nobody picks him up then you just kind of put a watch list tag on him and monitor what he does game to game because when he takes off he's going to take off let me see if lively's still around that's one thing i did not do oh lively's still here too oh shoot these guys i got lively I got Lively at 110. I'm going to grab Lively next, actually. But I'm, I'll grab Lively before I grab Hartenstein, I think. Right? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Would you draft Isaiah Hartenstein, throw him in your IR, and sit back in a 10-team league? It's going to be some talent on the, on the wave of wire. I don't have to stress about that. Or would you just secure Derek Lively right now? What would you do? I, a part of me wants to get Isaiah Hartenstein because I have... 
I have so much um, firepower right now. I feel good, but and I know he won't fall to me. If I don't grab him here, I won't have a chance to get him. Lively, if I count it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, who's 15 picks ahead according to their projections. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm at 13. So I, in 13 picks, I'll be up for that second or for the next time I can grab Derek Lively if I decided on Hartenstein. So I might roll my dice here because I feel comfortable with Scoot Henderson. I also like Brandon Pajemski here. Like, I'm going to just grab Hartenstein because, again, you want to make sure that you're making uh, long-term plays. Like, Hartenstein, I have him at 70. If I don't have him for the first few weeks of the season, if he doesn't play until November because of this broken wrist or whatever, that's cool. I have IR spots. I have multiple IR spots. I'll put him in the IR, and I'll wait. And when he comes back, I'll have tons of value. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab me some Isaiah Hartenstein. And then hopefully I can get Derek Lively later, maybe even Scoot Henderson. Because I have Scoot Henderson down as my preferred pick for the 13th round. I'm hoping, my apologies, for the 14th round, I should say. So that's Scoot for the 14th. Nas Reed was my preference for the 13th round, but he's gone. Let me see if Trey Murphy the third is around, because if Trey is around, that would also be up. He's around as well, so I'm going to cue him up. And he also has an injury tag on him as well. So let's see what the heck is happening with Trey Murphy the third. They're saying the Pelicans announced that Murphy has been diagnosed with a right hamstring strain and will be re-examined in three weeks. I, I, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm okay with Hartenstein because I know with a wrist injury, he gets injured, he comes back, he plays. It's not like hamstrings and knees. All of that stuff is lingering. These are lingering issues. So I'm grabbing Hartenstein here, and I'm going to be very grateful to throw him in my IR until November. That's all good with me. That's all good with me. I have a bunch of... Um, centers queued up. I, I really like Chris Paul, and I think I'm way higher on Chris Paul than many. I don't have him as one of my targets uh, that I'm looking for in drafts, but at this point of the draft, if I could grab him with the 135 pick, that's definitely something that I'm going to do. I'm taking him over Klingon. I'm taking him over Derek Lively. I'm taking him over Rob Dillingham. Like, None of that. I, I, Alex Sar, none of that. I want to have Chris Paul on my team. If I can get him in the 13th round in a, in a, in a points league, 10 team points league? Shish kebabs. Come on, man. You already know. But we are winding down this draft. We all are in the 13th round of 16, so there's only three more picks for me. Brandon Pajemski is still around. I'm grabbing Chris Paul before I grab Brandon Pajemski. Man, my voice is getting hoarse. I'm going to have to grab a beverage. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. All of this water on your face. Hey, yo. And let you try to conduct your week. Like, nah, we're going to start with waivers. We're going to go to buy low, sell high. We're going to give you the rankings, let you make a decision. And it might be three segments. It might not be four and five segments. But I definitely know that this season... I want to take the input of the community and inject those new ideas into our content and just test them out. If they don't perform well, we'll try them. And if they don't, then we'll move on and try something else. And that's okay. But at the end of the day, it's all about making sure that you guys have as much information as humanly possible in order for you to secure your fantasy basketball championship. And that's why we're here. It's fun and it's 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 awesome to have community. And that's like what gets me up in the morning, you know, when it comes to this content stuff, why I get up sometimes and film content at 5 a.m. before I go to work, sometimes 12 o'clock on my lunch break, I'm in my car filming content, is because I want you guys to win. But more importantly, 
I want to make sure that we build a strong community. So if you listen or follow us on YouTube or on our audio podcast, please make sure you stay with us in the off season. We've seen people leave the, the Discord server, leave the YouTube channel even. Sometimes we have unsubscribes, people who leave the email list, pay subscribers who turn to free subscribers. Just make sure like during the off season, you still give the same kind of support because we're still going to create content during the off season. We'll get a little more creative about what we do and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, this is a year-round thing. And that's why we always encourage people to try Dynasty. We're in two more picks here. These guys are taking every minute of the draft. They don't give a crap about my life. They don't care about their own lives. Like, just make a freaking pick, bro. Like, where are we? What, what are we doing? Where they do that at? Where they do that at? This is another person from Harlem. My main man, Kenny, a.k.a. Team Grammy. This is some Harlem shish kebabs right here, yo. Come on, man. You going to really auto-draft on your last pick? Frick out of here. Okay, let's do the recap. Let's do the recap. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yes. James the Beard Harden. Yes. Alperin Baby Joker Shin Goon. Yes. Evan Baby Duncan Mobley. Yes. Paul PG13, a.k.a. Podcast P. George. Maybe. Maybe. Fred the Skeet. I shouldn't say that. I, I, I said I was not going to say that, and I'm not going to say that. Fred Van Vliet. Yes. Darius Garland. Yes. Josh the Giddler. Giddy. Yes. Zach Eady. Yes. OG Ananobi. Yes. Denny Avdia. Mm, maybe. Tyus Jones. Maybe. Isaiah Hartenstein. Yes and no. Donovan Klingon. Maybe. Keontae George. Maybe. Rob Dillingham. Maybe. A bunch of maybes. No no's. Feel really strong about the top of the squad. Have some concerns in the middle. Just a lot of question marks. Specifically, Paul George. Not sure what's going to happen there. Uh, Denny Avdia, as excited as I am about him, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Same thing with Tyus Jones and everybody else at the bottom of the roster. For that reason, I'm going to give myself a three out of five GOAT rating. Do me a big favor. Check out this episode right here so you can get our top 50 Tips for fantasy basketball. This episode was presented to you by Bet Online.